The Denver Nuggets are attempting to do something no other team has ever done in the history of the NBA. Come back from two consecutive 3-1 deficits. Meanwhile, the Clippers are finding out just how hard it is to close out a team, despite having had significant leads over the past two games. So, if games 5 and 6 are any indication, perhaps Denver wants to be down big in the first half of game 7, since it's been their recipe for success and has put them on the brink of history. This game was filled with plenty of wild swings back and forth, so let's dig into a few of them and get an understanding of what's working for both teams. Early on, the Clippers go on an 18-4 run to take an 8-point lead midway through the first quarter behind their two marquee players, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. They run a flat pick and roll where the other three players are along the baseline and attack Millsap, whose poor footwork has him falling backwards for two steps, and while Jokic is there at the rim, he offers no protection. PG then got his mid-range going with a quick drag screen, knowing Jokic will not come out of the paint for fear of getting beat. Plus, the Nuggets are okay with long twos, however this is a wide open elbow jumper. First, I was really impressed with this lefty one-handed pass while hovering in the air. And even more impressive was the angle Kawhi took towards Gary Harris, knowing the only passing option he'd have was to the top, and he gets rewarded with a demoralizing steal and the easy glide for the slam to go up by 5. Later in the second, the Clips fry the Nuggets with an even bigger 16-2 run by again attacking with George in the pick and roll. I like how they synchronize this sidestep jumper and Zubats' roll to the hoop, and just a great find to show the jump shot before passing to the big man for the dunk. Meanwhile, the Nuggets generate a perfect kickout three off the short roll from Jokic, but it just doesn't fall. When Kawhi can't keep Jokic off the boards, it looked like they get another chance. And just look at the incredible audacity to throw a no-look-behind-the-pack pass would have been jaw-dropping, but instead it's turnovering. This one set started out problematic with the good hands by Zubots to dig out the bounce pass of the high post split. Murray misses the pocket pass after his pass and he continues to get handled by Kawhi who sparks the fast break and dishes to George for the and one. We're not used to seeing Kawhi hang out in the dunker spot in the weak side, but as the ice defense on PG works to perfection, Millsap boxes out Zubots, Murray has no way of getting in front of Kawhi, and his multiple fakes get an opening to lay it in for a 19-point lead. Here's another unique movement by Zubots, who cuts along the baseline in the middle of a Kawhi face-up in the low post. But it works, because Jokic came over to shadow Leonard in the block, forcing Harris to bump down to Zubots. This pass was a few feet off target, but Beverly still has plenty of time to attack the closeout into the middle and hits the little hook shot. In the only score by the Nuggets in this run, there's a little foreshadowing as Kawhi Leonard uncharacteristically puts himself out of position going for the reach around, allowing Murray to step through to the hoop for an easy layup. But he makes up for it on this pistol action as Lou sets the pin down and Zubots hands off and rolls. Give credit to Tory Craig for getting through all that, but Kawhi hits him with a step back 3 point swish and it appears the route is starting. But the Nuggets won't just lay down and die. Early in the third, they run the same exact pistol action that we saw from the Clippers, except Jokic feels the reach in by Zubots and quick releases the shot. I was honestly very surprised they counted this because he had certainly not gathered the ball before the foul occurred. But here comes the comeback. This step up screen for Kawhi didn't work out as planned because he makes the pass to Zubots too early, considering his value on rolls to the hoop is when he can catch it in the lane. That said, great ball movement gets the defense all out of position. Morris missed the potential backdoor cut by Beverly, but Kawhi gets all the way to the hoop, is clearly whacked on the head by Grant in his block attempts, but no call. And when Zubats brings the ball down like this, it's almost an automatic turnover. What you are about to see is a classic example of why Patrick Beverly is such a good defender. By getting in a low stance like this, he makes Murray turn his back to the basket. He is physical and holds his ground until Murray gives it up. And just watch how he can reach in cleanly while still maintaining great position, forcing Murray into mishandling his dribble. Then he gets around the ball screen as Jokic gets the pass. Beautiful rotations as PG steps over to cover Jokic until Zubats can get there. 
Kawhi covers for Morris's man cutting, but Jokic throws a bad pass across court, eliminating the opening for a shot. Grant pays him back by throwing an equally poor pass right back to Jokic, and when the shot goes up, watch Millsap get a step and be relentless in not giving up his position till he corrals the rebound. Paul George almost ties him up, even though it's tough to get a jump ball called when you're directly behind your man. This gets them a shot, and Beverly flies in for his fifth foul. This will come back to haunt them big time. Remember that the Clippers often put Kawhi on Jokic to blow up the pick and roll for Murray, but on this one, they target Harrell, who inexplicably chases Jamal to half court, all the while foolishly reaching in for the ball. This opens up the lane for a Murray drive, and when Morris clearly is late getting to the spot, it becomes a tough and one. Jamal Murray shot a scalding hot 9 for 13 from the field for 21 points, and as they continue to close the gap, they go at Landry Shamit. I love the ball screen in the post. And while it didn't get him an opening, who needs it when you can just turn over your right shoulder and drop this one in over the contest? The Clippers turn to a double floppy, with Green and Harrell setting pin downs on either side. However, watch how Lou flips this and becomes a screener himself. This forces a switch and allows Lou to go at the much slower footed Jokic. Lou isolates on the right wing, uses the gallop to Hezzy then blow by Jokic, but bad visual recognition not to see Grant in front of him coming over to help. He had cutters in the way to the hoop, but decides to shoot, and Grant just sends it away. At this point in the season, you have to make good decisions based on your roll. And when Lou hits Harrell on this roll above the free throw line, he's got a few good choices to pass to. Instead, he opts for a floater from behind the dotted line, a shot he simply does not shoot often or well. And when Kawhi can't finish this Jordan-esque attempt, Despite Jokic not even getting a hand up, but perhaps getting away with a foul, the Nuggets come down fast to take advantage of Kawhi being on the ground. Harrell looks lost, no idea who to guard, and when Paul George must stop the ball, Green is stuck guarding two guys. As Jokic faces the basket, he makes the excellent read to Harris for a layup, and the Nuggets have come almost all the way back. Here's a great action the Nuggets run setting a screen with Harris, who then flares to the opposite wing off the Jokic screen. Just before Jokic can take advantage of the mismatch against Lou, the Clippers send a double and then check the orchestration of perfect rotations, all the way to running Harris off the line and then stepping in front to take the charge. But the Nuggets would not be denied. The Murray pressure in the backcourt puts Lou in peril. It appears he crosses the half-court line with 19 seconds left on the shot clock. Remember, if he gets to 16, it's an 8-second violation. But to establish front court presence while dribbling, you must have both feet and the ball clearly in the front court. Notice how a sliver of Lou's heel is still on the line, so that when he goes to retrieve the ball, the 8 second count is still going. Credit to the referees who got this right, a very impressive call to make in this situation. Early in the fourth, the Nuggets take their first lead since the first quarter, when PG makes an ill-advised attempt at drawing a foul and Lou completely screwing up the transition defense. Harrell had the ball, Lou should be going to Craig. As a result, Craig gets to think about it for a while before knocking down the three for the lead. Now, Doc makes a rash decision coming out of this timeout, and it made little sense to me. He inserts Beverly back into the game with five fouls, knowing he'll never be able to dial down his aggressiveness. I think Beverly is a key for the Clippers, and it took him all of two possessions to pick up his sixth foul. As he's still all over Murray, and in his pursuit, he's awfully provocative with the hand on the pass, but it did come loose. However, he quickly steps in front of Morris to try and take a charge, probably the one thing you tell a guy with five fouls not to do. It's a bang-bang play, and it just doesn't look like he got in legal guarding position. As a result, a huge key for them is out for the rest of the game, and he should never have been on the floor to begin with. A little bit later in the fourth, the Nuggets are nursing a two-point lead. We have Kawhi now guarding Jokic so they can switch that pick and roll and not lose anything on the ball. So Denver adjusts and says, great, we'll just post up down low in the mismatch. They invite the double team. The Clippers again rotate perfectly and forcing a shooter to put the ball on the ground, move a few feet before shooting is a bit of a win for the defense, but Michael Porter Jr. is too good. Kawhi uses the ball screen out top to put Craig in jail before stepping over into a little running one-hander. Kawhi never misses shots like these, yet he gets caught between trying to bank it and trying to swish it. Kawhi has done a few things the past two games that have been remarkable on the bad side for him considering his standard of excellence. 
and getting stuck up in the air and trying to force a pocket pass is something we almost never see him do. Then off of the inbounds play, Kawhi is a step slow reacting to a very common play here, perhaps hoping Zubats would take a step back to allow Kawhi to get through the gap, but that doesn't happen and Murray hits the easy 18 footer. One missed cue on defense can cause a serious ripple effect. Lou gets caught up in the air on the shot fake and the Nuggets are merciless in their ball movement as the defense has to make up for Lou. They almost get there, but like I've been saying, an NBA shooter who starts his arm swing with the closeout still 10 feet away is a wide open shot. So now you're reeling, down 10 points with guys named Kawhi Leonard, Paul George and Lou Williams on your team. Whose number do you call? Kawhi? Lou? PG? So we all should be surprised when Marcus Morris shoots a three ball with 15 seconds left on the clock. Can you hear me shaking my head? The Clips were then deprived of a steal when the referee incorrectly ruled this a kicked ball. Remember, to be a kick it has to be intentional. This clearly was not. The Clippers then begin this possession with Kawhi on Jokic and PG on Murray. But they set a simple pin down, flip it, and it gets him a switch. So Jokic turns this into a back down post up on the much smaller PG. With the shot clock winding down, Jokic uncorks this beauty. A right footed, right handed turnaround jump shot with George all up in his face. And I gotta tell you, there's something to this same foot, same hand finish that Jokic has developed from the outside we all should be looking at it more. And as a result, the Denver Nuggets never look back the rest of the game, completing a stunning reversal of events to set up an epic showdown tomorrow night on the Clippers' home court. Anything can happen, and considering how these games have gone so far, anything will. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe for more playoff breakdowns coming up. We'll have at least one a day during the postseason, so turn on those notifications so you can be alerted right away. You in?